Very good morning to all of you. My name is Han Wei Kwa, and uh, it's a pleasure of mine to be able to share with you um, our latest work on the effects of silica-rich biochar on cement mortar. This is the outline for my talk this morning. And uh, I will begin by um, saying something about biochar. Well, biochar is a solid material obtained from thermal decomposition of organic matter, such as uh, biomass uh, in the form of uh, wood and leaves um, under an environment which is uh, um, limited um, in terms of the supply of oxygen and air. As you can see here from uh, uh, the diagram uh, right below here, uh, the key products of pyrolysis can be in the form of synthetic gas and bio oil. And of course, there's this solid byproduct called biochar, which can also be used for a wide range of uh, purposes, including to be used as soil enhancement, and in our case, as an additive or even cement replacement in concrete. The outward appearance of uh, biochar um, is, is very similar to uh, the, the more widely known charcoal. But of course, uh, to make biochar, we have to be very selective uh, with the feedstock as well as the production conditions. The field of uh, biochar concrete research is a pretty young one. In fact, the first paper, substantial research article on it was only published about nine years ago by a group in South Korea. And right after that, we have a series of work that stretches for about four years that look primarily at the different mechanical strength aspect of uh, concrete and mortar and examine how biochar serve to enhance these different properties. I first got to know about biochar concrete only back in about 2014, 2015. And the, the key motivation for me to look into that is to look for a solution for a rather um, um, challenging problem in Singapore. And that is that about 60% of building related complaints and problems that we are facing now in Singapore has to do with the transport of water in concrete. So not too long ago, we published an article um, in uh, the journal known as Cement and Concrete uh, Composites, in which we look at how different kinds of biochar can help to increase the water tightness of mortar. And these are the key results. Uh, in a nutshell, what we found is that when we have biochar, and in this case, a special kind of biochar that is unsaturated, we're able to dramatically reduce the depth of water penetration. And concurrently, we also find that this particular combination of sample of uh, uh, biochar containing mortar happen to also have the highest seven day and 28 day strength. So in summary, what we found is that indeed, when added into mortar, biochar can help to reduce the water penetration by about 57% and that's quite a lot. And at the same time increases the compressive strength by 16%. So that forms the basis, the, found, the, the, the foundation of uh, the work that we, we did later on. And uh, um, extensive uh, examination using uh, SEM images also show us that the, the inner wall of biochar pores, that means these are the pores on the biochar, um, um, also provide the additional surface for formation of cement hydration products. So to the extent that right now we know of four or at least four different reasons why biochar works. The first is that the, the sheer size of the biochar enables it to densify um, the cement matrix by acting as a microfiller. And secondly, the very fact that it has different kinds of pores on the surface allows it to densify the region around it simply by taking in the water. And this will also reduce evaporation from the region around it. And as I mentioned just now, 
after the water has been, uh, the free water in the, in the matrix uh, has been absorbed into the pores, the surface of the pores uh, begin to act as nucleation sites for the formation of cement hydration products and therefore driving and sustaining hydration. Last and not least, but uh, not the least, some of the water contained in the biochar is known to also diffuse out into the surrounding in order to sustain um, cement hydration in the regions. And this is especially, especially true when um, water is lost uh, in this region, um, either via bleeding or evaporation. So the big question therefore is whether we can make use um, of uh, these properties of biochar in enhancing water tightness to also solve the problem, to address the requirement for us to have more resilient buildings and infrastructure okay, in a climate okay, which is changing. And of course, in the future, when we have to face the rising sea levels. So with this in mind, uh, we came out with the aim to investigate the effect of two different kinds of biochar. One that is produced from rice husk and the other one from mixed wood waste uh, to, to see how uh, it may enhance the different properties of cementitious uh, mortar when it is exposed to 5% sodium chloride and 5% sodium sulfate solutions. Right, these are all done with uh, um, a big number of 50 millimeter cubes cured in uh, water, chloride, or the sulfate solution for 120 days. So over here, you get to see our composition mix. Um, and uh, uh, from here, you can see that uh, the control or the cement contents of control is gradually decreased as we put in an equivalent amount measured in, uh, in, uh, in mass, in terms of mass, of biochar into the mixture. Uh, what we find interesting is that the more biochar we add in, the higher the surface dry density, okay, which is actually um, um, telling us that the, the pores on the biochar really contribute to the densification of the matrix as a result of absorption and temporary storage of the free water in a matrix. So here are the key results. We find that um, upon comparing the elemental um, composition of uh, these two different kinds of uh, biochar, uh, um, not surprisingly, I would say that uh, the carbon contents of a mixed wood biochar is a lot higher. And of course, we are pretty um, um, glad to also see that in a case of uh, biochar from rice husk, the silica the silica level, the silicon level is high as well, which is pushing about 20%. What is even more important is to find out the percentage of presence of silica. And in the case of uh, biochar made from rice husk, it is about 16%, very close to what we are seeing in cement particles, right? In, in that case, it is about 20%. And when we measure the heat release from the cement hydration process, we found something really interesting. While the rest of the curves are pretty much the same, we find that by adding 2% by weights of biochar made from rice husk, right, there is a slight delay of the building up of the heat of hydration. And that can be attributed to the temporary covering of the surfaces of the CASH, which is a calcium aluminosilicate hydrate, all right, on the surface of uh, uh, tricalcium uh, aluminate, all right? And uh, this is only temporary because it's only a matter of time that, um, that the, 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 la the layer of uh, CASH um, is uh, removed and therefore allowing the water to come into contact with the Try calcium aluminate underneath. And what's more, we find that after exposing our samples to uh, um, sodium chloride, right, um, there is a very clear advantage of having um, 
uh, 2% biochar made from a uh, mixed waste wood in the mixture. And in fact, over here, you'll find that um, by putting 1% is even better. Right? Other than comparing the compressive strength, we also compare the change in the strength compared to water curing. Okay, what I mean by that is that, for example, I compared the strength of um, mortar con containing biochar from wood added at 1% cured in sodium chloride, right? To the strength of the same kind of uh, sample, but cured in water. And of course, after 120 20 days, okay, most of them perform worse off than their counterparts cured in water. But what is more interesting is that you can see the pattern here. And that is that when I have only 1% presence of uh, any kind of biochar in mortar, the reduction in the strength compared to their counterpart cured in uh, water, right? It's not as much, the drop is not as much as if I were to add 2%. So in other words, what I found is that mixed wood biochar added at 1% by weight strengthens motor even after being exposed to sodium chloride solution. And it also records the lowest strength reduction over 120 days. And a similar conclusion can also be drawn when I expose these samples to sodium sulfate solution. So what may have happened? So this is a, a, a mental picture that we had on uh, what might have happened. And basically, whenever we have biochar right, uh, in the mixture, it helps to absorb water into its interior. And as a result of that, help to recede the waterfront. So you can imagine that the waterfront all right, um, signified the line as indicated here. It, when water, in this case, um, um, fluid, containing uh, sodium chloride flows from the right-hand side towards the left-hand side. So with biochar around, a thick wall uh, made up of ettringite and uh, the Friedel salts helps to impede further ingress of salt and therefore limiting structural damage okay, due to any expansion and therefore crack formation as a result of accumulation of ettringite. In fact, all these can be seen from some of the SEM images that we have took. And we have also found evidence that the four factors, how biochar strengthen um, the concrete and uh, reduce the permeability uh, can be um, also found in our SEM images. For example, this picture over here shows how a biochar can help fill a pore, all right, in the cementious um, uh, matrix. And of course, as time goes by, the accumulation of uh, ettringite and FS right, cause further cracking and therefore reduction in strength in all of our samples. And this is shown by this hairline crack over here. The higher the percentage of biochar, right, we find that the higher the tendency of some of the pores in the biochar being only partially filled. And this actually lead to higher porosity, which translate into lower strength as well. And especially for the case of uh, biochar from um, rice husk and added at 2%, right? we find that uh, the chemical reaction between the sulfate salts right, and the silica, which is present in RHB or the um, biochar made from rice husk, they will serve to weaken the bonds on the surface of biochar and therefore accelerate the debonding of the biochar from the surrounding matrix, which leads to lower strength as well. In conclusion, what we found is that just by adding one to 2% by weights of uh, biochar made from wood has the potential of increasing the compressive strength of mortar by eight to 11%, all right? And at the same time, reduces the total salt absorption after 120 days, okay, substantially. And of course, the exposure 
to a sulfate solution leads to an increase in strength at 42 days. This is not something surprising. And at least in our tests, right, we managed to get a result which is in agreement with some of the results from the literature as well. And finally, after 103 days of exposure, all right, we found that by adding one to 2% of um, the different kinds of uh, biochar studied here, we have the potential of getting an increase in compressive strength of between 14 to 17%. So we would like to thank uh, the Ministry of Education from Singapore for providing the fund for this research. And uh, as a parting remark, I would like to bring your attention to one of the new journals um, uh, in which, for which I'm um, an editorial board member, and it is a journal entitled simply Biochar. So we look into different aspects of biochar. I believe if you want to know biochar, you'll be able to find the article of your interest over here. So thank you very much for your time. <laughs>